He is currently working in a private practice at the Sports Performance Hub and consulting for Tuck Sport. He completed his MA in Counseling Psychology at UP, which he graduated with distinction. <coughs> Charles, is a passionate, Charles is passionate about working with youth in the sporting fraternity. His interests lie in anxiety, stress, depression, trauma, and transitional life challenges. He realizes that mental health services are not readily accessible to everyone and feels a sense of responsibility to use his professional expertise to help create awareness on how we can better maintain our emotional and psychological well-being. It's a topic that is very relevant in today's society, especially in the University of Pretoria. Please help me and join me in welcoming Charles Malanga. I didn't realize that uh, this moment would be so auspicious. I think even my heart rate agrees. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Um, I'm going to be speaking to you about something that's very close to my heart. It's a project called For the People, By the People. I didn't get my, okay, all right. That's fantastic. What button do I press? It's a good question. What button does it press? I don't want to be DD on Dexter's lab. There we go. It, okay. That, okay. Fantastic. So I'm going to be speaking to you about a project that's close to my heart that sort of was seeded about a year ago and um, has slowly started to manifest itself this year. All right. I work in mental health like I was so graciously introduced. And one of the realities that I face is that I probably will not be able to make the impact that I want to within my career lifespan. But just because that is a reality I face, on a facial expression that says, I'm determined to prove that reality wrong. But let me just give you some context. 2003, 2004, that was the last time a South African study was conducted about mental health and mental health disorders within the South African context. The study included anxiety, depression, trauma, and substance use disorders. But it did not include any other forms of mental health. It also did not include children and adolescents. And we are very aware that within our schooling, ADHD, misconduct disorder, eating disorder, all of these things are very prevalent. From the study, it was discovered that one third of the adult population in South Africa will suffer or will engage with some form of mental health illness or disorder within their lifespan. But that study was limited. And the thing about that is, what do we actually think those figures are? Because there's so many times that I have conversations with friends, family, and they're always saying, bro, I'm going through the most. <laughs> right. And the difficulty we have with that is, I think a lot of us believe that mental health is something that we have to fix. It's a mechanical process, it's a once-off, and it's not something that we have to maintain. And the challenge with that is that that's unrealistic. It's a constant, everyday battle. And I'm sure a lot of you were probably nodding your head, you're like, yeah, that's what I've been actually feeling and doing. The difficulty with it is there's a lack of admission, there's a lack of understanding, and that results in avoidance, marginalization, stigmatization, and underestimation of mental health. One of the biggest difficulties about mental health, I must say, even as a person that works within that field, is that we have to see to believe. And a lot of us struggle to understand it because we can't quantify it in some way or another. But funny enough, one of the biggest contributors to mental health is social media and the internet. And one of the difficulties with that is we see people's highlights, we see people's successes, we also see their pretenses. 
And we ascribe that as the way and the direction that we need to carry on and live our lives. And we put this excessive pressure on ourselves. But we forget that nobody is posting their failures. No one's posting their hardships. Right. So one of the challenges that I had when putting this together, and I'm going to introduce these lovely people that so graciously volunteered, is basically making you see mental health, but even more than seeing mental health, making you feel mental health. Can you give these lovely people a warm welcome as they come and say? Okay, guys, you can get into position. <laughs> okay, you'll see each of these people are holding some kind of glass, right? And I view this as mental health, right? How much the glass can hold is pretty much our predisposition when you talk about mental health. How, what is our capacity to deal with the challenges, right? The shape of the cup, the shape of the cup, right, is sort of how we've been molded and how we've had to deal with our realities and how we've had to engage with mental health. This man, and you can go around sort of filling it in so long, this man represents life, right, and some of the challenges and some of the things that we face in our lives, right. But there's also a time construct we need to be aware of because people are not always just taking, taking, taking and not offloading. So after some time, when we've engaged with different things, we're able to offload and get ready for the next challenge, right. So what I'm going to do, right, for the next 20 seconds, I'm going to have life, right, I'm going to have life try and do the most to these people. <laughs> and I want you to keep in mind avoidance, stigmatization, marginalization, and underestimation, right. Your time starts now. We can count it. You can count it. And that's life. Life keeps throwing the most at us. But what these people had, she was standing, trying to avoid this, right? He should have been closing his eyes, but I don't think he realized. But that's sometimes the... <laughs> right. That's sometimes the reality, that we're not aware of what is happening. And these people sat and looked, or stood and looked at each other, and just basically watched their cups overflow. But what if we, right, did not, to, did not let this be our reality? What if we could redefine it? What if we could redefine it? What if we could share our load a bit? What if, what if at the end of that time, once it expired, we realized more about our mental health and we decided, hey, we're not going to let life do the most to us. We're going to do the most to life. So for the next 20 seconds, you guys are going to count again, but they are going to try and beat life by being more aware of their mental health. I'm sure a lot of you, initially, when the first round came, you're like, yo, this thing is probably going to overspill. But on the second round, how many of you, by a show of hands, were rooting for the people to not have their cups overflowing? Just a show of hands. Right. And that speaks to the hope that we should have. And that speaks to 
what our reality could be. And that speaks to how we can redefine mental health. And that speaks to how we can be more authentic in our engagement with people, how we can share the load, how we can share the burden. So I want to encourage you, as someone that works in mental health, I have created a platform where I want an authentic sharing experience a story sharing experience, yes, that's a mouthful. But I want to redefine mental health. I want us to challenge this, I can be strong in the corner by myself. I know by first hand experience that I don't always like people knowing the difficulties that I'm going through, but I also appreciate when I am able to offload some of that load. I'm also aware that we might not all want to do it on a public platform, but I hope in many ways this engagement can show us what the power of the collective can do. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Charles Malanga. I work in mental health. I'm a psychologist, but above all else, I am a human being. And that hope that you felt and all those hands that I saw rising, and if there weren't any that was rising, then you need to be probably on the stage. <laughs> that hope is what I'm hoping can come off for the people, by the people, a story sharing initiative. Thank you very much for your attention and time.